So this talk is really kind of focused on making sure everybody's on the same page as ter in terms of the terminology and the, and the, and the, and the very basics of metabolomics. For, for the 67% of you or whatever it was that are familiar with metabolomics, you know, saw Chuck's talk, are ready to go, let's get to the meat of it. This probably won't be all that interesting, um, although it's good to just refresh uh, memory and, and, and understand the terms that we're gonna use. For those of you that are new to metabolomics, this is important because it'll give you a, 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 you know, a, a detailed sense of the, of the terms that we're gonna use and, and, and the meaning of all this stuff. So, um, so hang in there, just 25 minutes of it if it's review, um, and we'll get to the meat starting very soon. So at the end of this session, um, what I hope would, that we'd be able to do would be, um, uh, you'll understand what a metabolite is. Most of you probably have a pretty good sense already, but uh, you know, it's, it's a question worth defining. Um, and when and how metabolomics is useful um, in research. Most of you are here because you think it would be useful for your research in some way. Um, and I think we'll, 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 we won't do anything to dissuade you. Hopefully we'll, we'll persuade you that maybe even more, re more useful than you realize. Um, we'll define the metabolomics techniques Chuck already mentioned, targeted, untargeted, and fluxomics. And I agree with Chuck's statement that those lines are blurring and we can blur them in a very useful and effective way, um, a, a cost effective and, and time effective, even more important way um, these days. So, so it's good to know what, what they mean, but it's also good to know um, that, that they do connect. Um, and then we'll define the, the purposes and limitations of each technique. Okay, um, so you'll see this workflow slide a few times today. Um, and through that, throughout the, the course of the, uh, of the conference of the, of the work, uh, workshop, um, kind of give you an idea of where we are in the, uh, in, the, in the scheme of metabolomics. And we like to visualize this as not a, a linear progression necessarily from start to finish of experiment, although practically speaking, it sometimes works like that. But really we like to think of it as sort of a cyclical process. You have an idea, a research concept that needs investigating. You consult with the core, um, uh, you design a study, hopefully in collaboration with us, you collect your samples, then you submit them to the core, they undergo sample preparation, um, then we do the stuff that we need to do to get data out of them, here's your data, then we, do, then we and or you do statistics to help make meaning out of that data, um, we interpret the data, uh, explore what it means, and then maybe you've got an answer, maybe you have a new research idea that perhaps might need to be investigated using more metabolomics or other techniques. Um, so this talk fits in this workflow and methods, but really this talk encompasses the, the whole process, um, I, except for maybe, you know, the, the idea may be a little bit more up to you, although, you know, sometimes that winds up being an interactive process with the core as well. Okay, um, and so we'll define the terms, we'll look at uh, metabolomic strategies, we'll talk about targeted workflow, untargeted workflow, and then fluxomics very briefly, and all of these will be covered in more detail in upcoming sessions. So just getting things. Okay, what's a metabolite? Um, I, most of you probably have a pretty good sense. Well, sometimes it helps to define what something is by defining what it is not. And so obviously metabolites come from a biological system, um, any organism, cell, tissue, biofluid you're hoping to study. Um, but things that are not metabolites that you would find in such a sample include DNA, RNA, and proteins. These are your biological macromolecules, which really are, you know, in, in many ways the, the focus of, 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 you know, molecular biology to a large extent and all the small stuff that's in there um, you know, sometimes, you know, at least historically speaking, uh, lesser attention has been paid. Um, uh, small molecules make up the metabolome. And so small molecules, anything that is less than a molecular weight of 2,000, um, very roughly speaking, um, I, produced by a bi biological system can be defined as a metabolite. And depending on who you talk to, that, that specific definition may vary a little bit, but that gives you an idea of what we're usually looking at here. Um, what can these things be? What can they do? They can be a fuel substrate, something that's, that's, uh, that's consumed, oxidized, or otherwise metabolized for fuel for an organism. It can be a structural component. Sometimes these uh, small molecules can actually make up part of a, part of a cell that, that's related to, to its structure. Um, uh, it can be a signaling molecule. Um, it can have many other classes. Uh, metabolites can also include um, exogenous compounds. Um, and, and some of these are derived from these things that are not metabolites. Um, I, and so, so all of these things encompass the range of metabolites. And j although we say that these things are not metabolites, they're, they're made up of things that can be considered metabolites. So proteins made up of peptides, which are made up of amino acids, and those are commonly considered uh, metabolites. Um, uh, RNA made of nucleosides, DNA deoxynucleosides, all of these fall in the, in the small molecule range. Um, so there's, there's interaction between the, 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 um, the, the oligomers, these, these, these macromolecules, and the metabolites very specifically. 
Um, and, and metabolomics uh, then would be the, and this is just my definition of it, you can, you can come up with it, one of your own or and, and any paper you read would have a different one. Um, but metabolomics is the attempt to identify and quantitate all or some portion, depending on what you're interested in, of these small molecules in biological sample and study their roles in the, in the biological system that you're interested in. Okay, um, all right, so uh, a simplified workflow. Now we've, we've gone, so I said, you know, circle is good, but now I'll show you the, the real basic linear one. You start with a biological experiment, you, um, you, prepare, you collect and prepare your samples, then we do instrumental analysis, this black box here, we'll talk more about that in a little bit, um, and then we do uh, data analysis and interpretation. So who does what here, right? Um, you know, you, most of you, um, some of you may be coming with the perspective, the idea of you're, you're gonna go and take metabolomics back to your institution and try to actually do some of this yourself. Um, and that's great, and we're happy to, to help you with that uh, if, if that's where you're at. But most uh, of you here are most likely considering using the metabolomics core to help you with this research. And that's what we're here for, that's what we want to enable. Um, and so in that context, who, who does what in this sort of study? Um, I, I, you I probably define the biological experiment um, in collaboration with the core. Um, and you may uh, probably collect your samples, although there's sometimes some interaction there in the, in the sample collection stage. Sample pre preparation, the, the things that get it ready for uh, you know, taking a, a biofluid or cells and, and putting it on an instrument, uh, mostly is performed by the core. Sometimes there's some overlap there. Um, and then the next stage is instrumental analysis. That's the, the, the part of metabolomics that's usually handled entirely by the core. You don't have to worry too much about it. We'll still talk about it, although it's, it's very important and helpful for you to know um, what's going on a little bit uh, with that instrumental analysis so you can understand the, the sort of data you're get, going to get and the meaning that, that it'll have. And then data analysis interpretation, this is where we fade back into um, uh, you know, a collaborative uh, 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 arrangement. You may be able to take your data and understand what it means um, you know, without further uh, efforts, or it may be a little bit of an interactive process in, in trying to do the, statist the statistics and, and uh, compound identification and, and, uh, and, and, and real uh, you know, integration with other, other uh, you know, pieces of data that makes it all work together. Okay, so Chuck already showed you the slide um, and, uh, and, and told you a little bit about it, uh, the, the, uh, the, the distinctions between targeted and untargeted metabolomics. So I'll just point out a couple things. So targeted metabolomics, usually if you're doing a single targeted metabolomics assay, you're after tens or low hundreds of compounds. It's not one uh, compound at a time. Um, we'll, we'll do that if it's necessary, but usually you'll be looking at a metabolite class, say amino acids, bile acids, um, acylcarnitines, um, or some groups of classes. Um, here, the, the, the identities of these metabolites is completely unambiguous. You know exactly what you're looking at because we've defined it with standards, and we can do absolute quantitation. We can measure these things at micromolar, nanomolar uh, quantities, um, I, or we can do relative quantitation if that's all you need. Um, uh, free fatty acid profiling in blood serum would be an example. Untargeted, like Chuck talked about, is, is when you don't know what you're looking for, you wanna look at everything. Um, uh, thousands of compounds at a time are, uh, are, are, are addressable, uh, potentially. Um, in, in some cases, you'll get very confident identities. As Chuck was saying, we can do targeted assays out of untargeted, quote unquote, data um, in, in a number of cases. Um, but there's also features in that data that, that Maureen and others will tell you about later on that may not be uh, confidently identi identified initially, um, and, and I, but there's still great biological meaning in those things, and we can do more to, uh, to, to extract that meaning and then ultimately identify the features. Um, relative quantitation, um, so this is really a sort of a defining difference. Um, I, unless we set up to do targeted and untargeted specifically with the idea of absolute quantitation at the same time, what you're gonna get is relative quantitation. Does group A differ from group B by what fold change and, uh, and in what direction? Um, and, and there's a lot of different examples. Okay, so workflow. Chuck showed uh, these slides um, a little bit. We'll, we'll talk through these steps in a little bit more detail. Um, uh, targeted metabolomics workflow is relatively straightforward um, and, and we'll talk a, a little bit about these steps right now. Um, so sample prep. Um, so you've collected your sample, you've got a biofluid or you've got some cells that you've submitted to the metabolomics for. What are we gonna do to get it ready? Um, well, I, in, in very brief terms here, the, the, the goal is just to take those cells or whatever it is and make it ready to put on an instrument. And this is a, a very basic uh, uh, set of steps. Oftentimes it'll wind up being more complicated, but the, um, the basic thing that we need to do first is get those metabolites out of your cells or your biofluid and into a solution that the instrument can handle. So we'll add some sort of an extraction solvent. Often it's an organic solvent, something like methanol, acetonitrile, or chloroform, or some mixture thereof and we'll pick that according to your sample and what you're trying to measure. 
uh, you want to homogenize the cells if you have if you have a biofluid, uh, you may just uh, mix it up with your uh, your extraction solvent. Um, if it's if it's cells or something some some more solid piece of tissue, you need to homogenize it and get those 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 small molecules that are inside the cells outside free into solution. Um, and what we'd like to do is remove the macromolecules, the things that we're not going to analyze for DNA, RNA, and proteins, um, and leave the metabolites in solution. And organic solvents uh, in a mixture with water or, or pure organic solvents, depending on whether you're interested in polar or nonpolar or both, um, uh, do a good job of that. And, and generally, we'll, we'll take the sample and centrifuge it or filter it in some way, shape, or form to remove the precipitated um, uh, proteins, macromolecules, leaving your, your small molecules in solution. Um, importantly, that extraction solvent may contain internal standards, and for, for absolute quantitation and even for relative quantitation, um, this is essential, and we'll talk more about that in upcoming uh, sessions. Okay, um, uh, so um, sample preparation. How does this affect me if you guys are going to do the, the sample prep? Uh, what do I need to know about this? Well, yes, it's usually handled by the metabolomics core, but good sample preparation results require good sample collection procedure, and that's um, what the next talk um, uh, is going to touch on. Uh, I think that's Anna giving that. Um, so that's 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 really critical, um, uh, and and so uh, so so in order to understand how best to collect samples, um, it helps to know what we do to prepare, and, and the core will work with you to, to do that. Um, sometimes you might need to do some of the sample preparation step yourself if you have metabolites that are especially labile and can't afford to be transported to the core lab in any way, shape, or form. Um, then then you may have to do that, and we'll help you understand what you need to do there. And sometimes method development, sometimes this is an iterative process. You're dealing with something we've never done before, no one's ever done before, a type of cells or, or, or tissue that haven't been extracted, and we need to do some method development in order to get that right. So come to the uh, core uh, um, before beginning your experiment. Okay, um, then what happens? Well, um, there will be talks on this in much more detail tomorrow, um, but basically we take raw data from the mass spec, and we get signal for individual metabolites out of that. Um, uh, this is this is a look at some chromatograms. All of this will be defined in more detail uh, coming up, and you'll get effectively a table of metabolite abundances. And that's not yet concentration values, but we'll get there um, by doing some sort of a calibration curve. And this is not that different from any calibration curve you've done in the past, um, I, you on a you know a protein assay or any other sort of a you know a, a, a you know spectrophotometric calibration. It's just that it's done with data that's generated by a mass spectrometer, and we can look at many things at once in a single assay rather than rather than, than, than uh, uh, one thing at a time. Um, then you get your data out. Um, so we're going to generate graphs, heat maps, uh, and statistical analysis. And the, the data analysis of targeted metabolomics data is really pretty you know, comfor comfortable and familiar to all of you. You'll be looking at relative or absolute levels of metabolites. You'll be able to interpret how that change, how those changes occur using generally relatively straightforward uh, uh, statistics, t-test, ANOVA. Um, et cetera, it can certainly get more complicated from there. You may visualize it in a way that you can show a lot of data at once. You may have a, a, a class of metabolites and you want to see how some of them are changing under different conditions. Um, and, and, and sometimes that's a lot to display graphically. So there will be a lot more on this sort of stuff tomorrow. Um, untargeted metabolomics workflow is a little bit more complicated and interesting. And Maureen's going to get into those details tomorrow. We'll step through it a little bit here just so you understand you know what some of those one of the some of those critical steps are, um, and and hopefully by the end of this workshop you'll you'll really understand what the core lab is doing with your data, and then how you may participate in, in some of this process. Um, so let's let's uh, let's touch through it first. So steps one and two: sample prep and instruments, which I completely skipped over because I, you have the pleasure of listening to me again today uh, to talk about instrumental analysis, something near and dear to my heart. Um, but we're not going to talk about it in uh, in this talk right now. Um, I, I, uh, sample prep more or less consistent with, with targeted metabolomics with some tweaks. The internal standards you use may be a little bit different to get more comprehensive coverage. Um, but the, the, the first step where it really differs, differs from targeted is um, feature detection. So instead of we already know what we're looking for, we know a mass for a metabolite that we're looking for and we're going to go look for that in our data. Um, we want to find everything that could possibly be a metabolite in your data so we don't miss anything that we might not have expected. And so feature detection is, is using computer software um, to attempt to find everything in your raw data that we'll generate uh, using our mass spectrometer um, or other instrument, uh, really mass spec heavy here, um, in the raw data that could be originating from metabolite. And, and we'll do that on each sample one by one, or the computer will do that. And it'll result in a table of features for each sample. Okay, all these different features, you know, hundreds, thousands of features with an abundance value, something that corresponds to the, the, the quantity that's there. 
and that will be uh, generated for each sample one after another. So we'll, we'll get a bunch of, uh, well, the computer will get a bunch of data tables effectively. The next step is to align those features. So great, we have thousands of features in each sample, but presumably if you're running a batch of samples together, you want to know, uh, you, you want to know not just how, what, all the features that are in each sample, you want to know what the relative levels are, are in all of your samples and how those differ from group to group. So the computer will, uh, will align those features saying, okay, here are the things with a consistent mass across the sample, here are things that are present in uh, two thirds of the samples or, uh, or only one sample. Um, and then and then generate a, a sort of a combined data table um, for the entire data set which has some some measure of abundance and and, and you know the visually this looks at you know if you're looking at a chromatogram we'll talk more about that later um, you can you can see that the features are aligned and, and they, they have a consistent mass and a consistent retention time and that gives us the confidence that we're looking at the same thing across all the samples um, then we're going to do some sort of data analysis so this is all done not necessarily knowing what the metabolites are it's not important yet what those metabolites are um, uh, until you, until you, the, the, the user, um, uh, go to try to interpret it. So we can take these data, um, uh, and so we have a, a, a table of thousands of features that, that may be uh, changing from, from, uh, from group to group or may be consistent from group to group, and we can do multivariate statistical analysis or other statistical methods, um, principal component analysis or other methods, PLSDA, um, various things that we'll talk about later in the workshop. Um, that can be used to detect features which are different between groups or conditions. So if you have an experimental and a, con and a control group and you want to know, well, what metabolites differ, um, these methods can pull out those features that differ and, uh, and leave aside all the features that are the same and of less interest. What you're usually interested in are things that change, um, uh, that, that define the differences between your groups. And uh, with this, this list of feature, we can use other, um, other statistical methods to rank these features by their importance and, and, and so that you get a list of features that, that may be of biological interest in your experiment. Now we do feature identification. So in, in, in the metabolomics core, you get the advantage of working with, a, with an established uh, uh, library. So all of our features that we detect, whether or not they change, are searched against an in-house library. So a, a lot of the features or a, a portion of the features that come out of the data set will be identified and you can see that, okay, if, if, I, if I'm looking at um, palmitic acid uh, in my data, um, even though it may not change, it may be a flat line across your control and experimental groups, um, you can see that you know, okay, now I identified that metabolite in my data and it didn't change. Um, so everything is searched against in in-house library. Not all of the features that come out of a metabolomics ex uh, experiment and untargeted metabolomics experiment are identified. But those features which the data analysis told us were of interest, the things that changed from group to group, um, uh, we may want to do more work to identify them if they aren't already identified. And so, uh, so uh, we can follow that up with a database search against an online metabolite database, which is more expansive than our in-house library where we've actually run the things on our own instrument. Um, we can follow it up with additional steps, maybe more analyses um, uh, to do the identification. And this will result in a confirmed or putative, uh, putative ID of the metabolite of interest most of the time, right? Sometimes, th sometimes the steps to get to that uh, identity from an unknown, completely uh, um, uh, 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 unknown signal are uh, many. Sometimes it's relatively straightforward. But the core, core lab will work with you to help identify features of interest if, if that helps you do your biological experiment. And now, as Chuck already talked about, we've got the hairballs. So we take those features, identified and also potentially unidentified features, and we can visualize the data. And uh, we can see connections between mat metabolites, pathways, and, and Ala is really an expert in, in, in these sort of techniques in developing a, a, a useful visualization, either based on known biochemical pathways um, uh, or based on uh, the, the correlation between features and the data and the connections between those metabolites can help you assign biological meaning to what is otherwise potentially a confusing, uh, uh, um, maybe confusing uh, set of changes that you observe. And so uh, there will be a lot more on this in upcoming sessions. Okay, uh, so great, untargeted, targeted, we know what they are. Um, how do we choose between them? Which one do I do uh, if I'm just getting started? Well, for a new pro pro uh, project where you really don't know what you're gonna see but you wanna know how metabolo metabolomics will help you, um, a, a workflow beginning with untargeted and leading the target is often best. That sort of global approach, going to the specific. 
Um, uh, but uh, some applications do favor one method over another. Biomarker discovery, you want to do biomarker discovery. Um, usually that's an untargeted approach to begin with. Hypothesis generation, if that's what you want to do, you want to understand what might be changing, untargeted is a good way to go. If you want the broadest coverage possible, maybe uh, to do uh, um, some, some, uh, some targeted analyses in, in the context of, uh, of, of a broad uh, coverage, untargeted is a good way to go. But if you want to do validation, maybe we need to do target analysis. If we already know exactly what's of interest and you want to quantitate them, uh, targeted is a, is a good approach to use. If you need absolute certainty of identification of all of the metabolites that you're looking at in your data, um, targeted is a good way to go. If you need absolute quantitation, usually that pushes you to a targeted workflow. Okay, um, so we've talked targeted and untargeted metabolomics. Now we have this cool thing called fluxomics. Well, what's that? So conventional metabolomics really measures only the concentration, relative or absolute, of metabolites um, that, that are in your sample. So that's good, uh, but that's only part of the picture, right? Because um, I, if you took a, a snapshot, for let's, let's look at this waterfall analogy. If you take a snapshot of a flowing river, um, you might not know what's really going on there. You wouldn't necessarily know the rate of flow of that river. You wouldn't know how things are moving. Is it, is it water that's flowing very quickly or very slowly? In a waterfall, that's determined by gravity. But in, in uh, metabolism, uh, the, the rate of flow uh, is independent of the, of the size of these metabolite pools. So um, uh, flux is, is the, a measure of the rate of turnover of metabolites. Um, and it's an important aspect of cellular metabolism. Again, it can't be measured by si uh, sim simply observing how much of a particular metabolite is, is present. And the trick that we use to enable that, uh, that measurement is stable isotope tracers. And Mahmoud will tell you more about that uh, uh, um, tomorrow. I won't go into detail on that today. Um, by analogy, it would be like putting dye in the river and watching that dye move from one pool to another. So um, uh, do I need to do metabolomics or fluxomics? Mahmoud will tell you more about this. Um, I, for a new project, starting out with fluxomics is probably not necessarily the way to go unless you know that's where you need to be looking. Um, untargeted and targeted metabolomics will often, often tell you whether fluxomics is needed. Um, I, sometimes it, the workflow goes from untargeted to targeted metabolomics and on to fluxomics, sometimes straight to fluxomics. Um, exceptions to all of this exist. Consult, consult with the metabolomics core, and Mahmoud is going to tell you a lot more about that tomorrow. Okay, um, so we've flown through the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the terminology in metabolomics. Um, uh, metabolomics is a study of all of the um, small molecules in a biological system or whatever portion of it you tell us is interesting or we, that we find uh, with you to be interesting. Um, tar targeted metabolomics is accurate quantitation uh, of selected metabolites. Untargeted is more comprehensive coverage. Not everything is necessarily identified right off the bat and, and requires more work. And the lines are blurring. Um, we can take an untargeted approach and we can do, uh, we can do uh, targeted quantitation of uh, data out of that as long as the assay type is compatible and, and the core lab will help you tell when that's the case. Um, fluxomics uses stable isotopes to study turnover and uh, the best way to determine what to do, uh, where you need to be if you're starting out is to consult with the metabolomics core. Come talk to us and we will help you uh, um, get in the right place as far as uh, running your experiment. Um, great, so that's it. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions and a lot of this will be covered in more detail in upcoming sessions. So. We'll be around, and uh, we'll, we'll be uh, happy to help uh, answer questions that come up. I know it's, yeah.